Hello everyone. A four-year girl has walked into my OP last week. Parents have brought her with complaints of pain in both the legs for the last two months. She was treated with calcium and vitamin D supplements, considering it as a nutritional deficiency. However, the pains didn't subside. Subsequently, she started to develop swelling of both the knee joints and also abnormality in her gait. On examination, she had swollen bilateral knee joint. She was worked up and diagnosed to have juvenile idiopathic arthritis. Juvenile idiopathic arthritis is one of the most commonest pediatric rheumatological disease we see in our daily practice. Juvenile idiopathic arthritis is an autoimmune condition, a condition in which the body's immune system mistakes the healthy organs as foreign bodies. So ultimately, the own immune system starts attacking the healthy body parts and damages it. When it affects the joints, it leads to arthritis. Juvenile idiopathic arthritis can in affect any children up to the age of 16 years. The usual manifestations are joint pains, swollen joints, morning stiffness. Morning stiffness is a characteristic symptom of inflammatory arthritis or juvenile idiopathic arthritis. The child characteristically has difficulty in walking and taking the first steps of the day. As the day progresses, the child walks better. Also, making a diagnosis of juvenile idiopathic arthritis in younger kids, toddlers is very difficult because they do not complain of pain up front and cannot localize the pain. What we need to observe here is that is there any change in the gait is there any limp or is there any abnormal behavior for example a toddler or who just used to walk previously in a normal gait will start limping or an infant would stop bearing weight and prefer crawling than standing up when the joints are affected so if we see any of these abnormalities in young child then also we need to think that there's a possibility of joint involvement and a probable juvenile idiopathic arthritis. When the disease is severe, low-grade fever can also be a manifestation. In some forms of juvenile idiopathic arthritis, like systemic juvenile idiopathic arthritis, high-grade fevers and rash are a part of the disease. There are various types of juvenile idiopathic arthritis and uh, they are categorized depending upon the number of joints, type of joints involved. Any joint can be affected in juvenile idiopathic arthritis, including the knee, ankle, hip, elbow and also spine. There is a very famous myth that children do not develop arthritis. This is extremely wrong. Like adults, children do can develop arthritis. In fact, arthritis in children is much more severe. It can cause more irreversible damage if diagnosed late. Arthritis in children can be because of variable reasons. In the rheumatological diseases also, the most common being juvenile idiopathic arthritis, other diseases which can develop arthritis include connective tissue disorders like systemic lupus erythematosus, vasculitic disorders like Kawasaki disease, Henoxolin purpura and various other auto-inflammatory disorders also can manifest as arthritis. Most of the times, parents walk into the OPD with the myth that juvenile idiopathic arthritis has no treatment or Treatment for juvenile idiopathic arthritis is lifelong. No, there is treatment for juvenile idiopathic arthritis and the treatment of juvenile idiopathic arthritis depends upon the type of joint involved, the subcategory of JIA and the organ involved in the disease. 
So most of the times, if the only joint is involved in juvenile idiopathic arthritis, treatment is in the form of intra-articular steroids, that is injecting steroids directly into the affected joints, followed by oral steroids, which would be given in tapering doses. And yes, we have lot of drugs which are steroid sparing agents, which help us in reducing the disease and simultaneously reducing the need of usage of excess steroids. Also, we have drugs which are known as biological drugs, which help in modifying the disease to a huge extent and help us giving a near normal life to these children. Juvenile idiopathic arthritis needs immediate and aggressive treatment to control the disease because it causes irreversible damage not only in the joints but other organs. These children need regular follow-up for checking the joints and also the involvement of other organs. For example, children with juvenile idiopathic arthritis having ANA positivity are at a very high risk of developing a complication of the eye which is called uveitis. Uveitis is inflammation of the eye. These children who have ANA positivity and arthritis have to be upfront screened with the eye evaluation on a regular basis to pick up this complication of uveitis because most of the times it is asymptomatic to start with. Not treated on time, uveitis can be vision threatening. So identifying this complication prior could save the vision of these children. Similarly, diseases in which the arthritis is prolonged can also affect other organs and cause various complications and hence these children need to be on regular follow-up.